Hello, and welcome to the Intel Open Platform Enabling Update. My name is Isaac Gorham, and I'm a principal engineer in the UEFI firmware space, working on customer enabling and silicon enabling for Intel, primarily server chipsets. So today's agenda includes three primary topics, the open source firmware overview, what Intel is doing to support open source firmware, our open system firmware potential logo targets and our understanding and alignment with the OCP OSF logo, and then our specific deliverables for the OSF logo and related activities and our current status. So I wanted to start with our vision for how we support open system firmware and how it fits into our existing firmware enabling activities. So as you can see, we basically start on the left with a mix of ingredients that we collect into our reference platforms that are then scaled out to a wide variety of uses. So the, uh, the components, the ingredients that we start with are a mixture of open source and binary pieces. We do not have a full open source solution. We have a mixture. The reference platforms, we've had a traditional closed source maximum feature reference platform that we enable the ecosystem with, and we're adding a reduced feature reference platform that we can put in the open source on the tianocore.org project, and we can use that to extend our enabling into more open source areas. So on the top of the right side, you'll see our traditional channels through firmware vendors and OEM, OEMs and customers and, and ODMs. And on the bottom, you see our new open channels that include the EDK2 min platform, the Intel Slim bootloader, core boot, and other bootloaders potentially. But the big ones for the server space, we're expecting to be the EDK2 min platform and core boot. So this is our basic vision for how we will extend our current enabling that's primarily closed source to an open source solution, open system firmware. So the key Intel binary deliverables are the microcode updates, the Intel trusted execution technology authenticated code modules, the SPS ME firmware, and then the Intel FSP firmware support package that enables our silicon for the host firmware. These three things will continue to be delivered in a binary form going forward. In terms of open source, the key pieces we will provide are the EDK2 minimum platform reference port, that reduced feature bootloader, uh, that reduced feature reference platform, the Intel Slim bootloader for some platforms targeting embedded applications, and the OpenBMC reference firmware that enables us to deliver more of our features in an open um, baseboard management arena. So the next topic I wanted to cover is our alignment with the OSF Ready logo. So this is still under discussion. The logo and requirements are under development, but we're aligning our efforts to meet this timeline and to work with the OSF team to produce clear requirements for the logo. So the target date is by 2021 for people to be able to ship systems with open source firmware, open system firmware. The key things we're targeting in the logo are to have clear and testable requirements, a reasonable timeline that works for the hardware vendors as well as the system vendors, and a reasonable timeline that supports multiple communities. The OCP communities around firmware, the core boot community, Linux boot community, and Tiano core communities. All of these are valid open system firmware implementations from the point of the logo, and more. Um, and then finally, the, uh, the OSF logo must support the OCP charter and goals, and so that is, that is the constraints, the starting point for the logo. The proposed schedule for the logo started last year at the Global Summit, where we identified a basic schedule for achieving this. In March this year, we are here talking about our current status to provide all of the ingredients and components that are needed for the OSF logo. We're expecting in September 2020, later this year, that we will have the ingredients available to system vendors so they are capable of shipping OSF systems. And at this time, later this year, we're looking to finalize the requirements for the logo so that there is sufficient time for vendors to produce systems that are fully compliant. 
And so we expect by this time next year that we will have OSF enabled, provided, and required capabilities. So if CSP or hyperscale customers want to purchase OSF enabled systems, they can. So that's the target schedule. And I will talk about in the next few slides or in a few slides our progress towards this schedule. So I want to talk a little bit about our minimum platform, slim bootloader, and our fully featured reference platform and how they work together. Our vision is to have all of these utilize the same silicon support through the Intel firmware support package. So we'll produce an Intel FSP for a particular product line and then that will go into the slim bootloader, the MIM platform, or the full closed source reference platform. The slim bootloader and the MIM platform will be open and they provide two variations on a way to build a vertically integrated system. The slim bootloader is a highly custom solution that is targeted for your system and is very unique to your system. The MIM platform gives you an ability to start from a minimum feature set and add things onto it, and then the full reference platform allows you to start with a fully featured system and remove things from it. So we think this way we can provide a spectrum of options that will meet everyone's needs or better satisfy people's needs as they move from traditional enterprise server firmware to more vertically integrated, more custom firmware. As we talk about what an OSF system needs, we talk about the minimum viable platform because you need this mix of binaries and source code to produce an OSF system. And so the, the name for that, since it's not just host firmware, uh, that we've been using is the minimum viable platform. So for the minimum viable platform, there's four key areas that we look at. So the FSP is the silicon support from Intel. It's targeted to enable any bootloader, and it's validated on our full reference platform. So this is the silicon support that Intel validates. The minimum platform is the bootloader. It's an open source reference platform, and it's aligned with our full reference platform that we utilize for validation. So it has less direct coverage than the full reference platform, but it is tightly aligned, and so the, uh, the validation of our reference platform, for the most part, is covering our minimum platform as well. So it's an incremental change, and we believe this is how we can enable an open solution quickly. On the lower left we see the licensed redistributable binaries. Our historical problem was the licensing of our binaries was not friendly to OSF and collaboration between customers. Uh, we enabled each customer directly but they were not licensed to share across uh, corporate boundaries. So we've worked with the community to agree on a license and apply this license to microcode updates, the Intel TXT ACM firmware, uh, the FSP firmware, and in recent months, the Ignition firmware for the ME. So at this point, we have all of the key components demonstrated with the new license that should enable the OSF collaboration we're looking for. And on the right side, lower right side, we have the OpenBMC, primarily focused on enabling innovation and allowing us to share more of our reference solution and reference capabilities. So talking about our upcoming plans, uh, putting them in the context of the OSF logo schedule, uh, last year at OSFC, we had posted the first set of redistributable binaries and we talked about our proof of concepts and ports from MIM platform demonstrating some of the pieces in their early form. Now we're currently under active development with platforms with the MIN platform and the FSP for the Intel Xeon scalable processor platforms. So those are under, develop, not under development, not available at this time, but when these products launch, after these products launch, these pieces will be available for open system firmware use. Um, so then finally, the OSF required stage uh, targeted for next year. We should have all of the pieces available and our ecosystem building with FSP, with the redistributable binaries that are available, and with access to the MIN platform that is open source. So 
We feel like we're basically on track. There's, of course, always schedule risk and unplanned changes and things happening, as, as we know. Um, but in general, we feel like our status is good and we should be able to support the logo efforts as they develop. So looking at the status of the MVP specifically, this is mostly to provide you the links and the understanding to look for references and find them in the open. So we can see the FSP availability, uh, examples of client platforms and, and, other, um, and the other Intel EDK2 and Tiano Core core code. Uh, that is all available on the tianocore.org project. And then the client FSPs are posted in, on GitHub in the Intel FSP repo. So those are available today for you to play with. We've, ups, we've upstreamed the Whiskey Lake reference platform and we're starting to see some other boards based on the Whiskey Lake chipset that are available in the Tiano Core project. So that's good news in the EDK2 platforms repo. In the minimum platform, We've got three things that you should be aware of. We did publish the proof of concept, but we have removed that as it wasn't being maintained and supported and there wasn't much activity. So the pearly proof of concept has been withdrawn, deleted from the trunk, and we're looking to replace it as the next generation of products ship for the server. The minimum platform specification is available. It is an early form, so please review that and provide your feedback. And then the Whitley and Cedar Island platforms are under development and will be available post-launch. In terms of the redistributable binaries, all of the examples are available in the EDK2 non-OSI repo, and there's the link. And in terms of the BMC, the open BMC uh, links are provided here as well. <coughs> so the Primary message, I think, uh, from our perspective is that we are on track, we are supporting the OSF logo and OSF activities, and we're very interested in engagement. So there's a couple primary documents being produced now that we're very interested to get the requirements and the initial thoughts on what is necessary to make OSF successful beyond just firmware. Uh, just the firmware pieces, but some of the tools, some of the update capabilities, those things are very interesting, as well as some of the security implications. So get involved with OSF, understand what the requirements are looking like, and contribute to the checklist, please. Uh, furthermore, the MIN platform is coming, and so uh, I would request that you take a look at the specification, you understand what we're providing, and you engage with that as the vehicle for enabling other bootloaders. Even if you don't plan to use the MIN platform, it's important to understand what Intel will be delivering in the MIN platform because that is what you can use to enable core boot or other bootloaders. Um, and then there are related discussions at OSF around the ME and the Ignition ME changes around MIM platform and around FSP. So I'd encourage you to attend some of the other Intel sessions and um, with that, I think I'm done. So thank you very much and have a good conference. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the question and answer. Uh, this is Isaac Oram. Uh, thanks all for watching. There is a Q&A box, uh, so please feel free to submit questions and I can try to answer them. Um, and we can continue in the chat as well. All right, so the first question is, how do technologies like BootGuard fit with this architecture? How does secure boot work? Um, so today, 
uh, we're still we're definitely targeting UEFI Secure Boot to authenticate the OS in the MIM platform. Um, and we're looking to connect BootGuard up as well. But that's a lower priority right now because for the OSF discussions, people really want to be able to shift ownership. And so BootGuard as a technology doesn't work for that um, circular economy kind of use case that, that the OCP open system firmware group has been targeting. So uh, boot guard is definitely in our interest. We want to enable it. Uh, we, we will look to enable it as so that we have a authenticated execution path all the way through with the hardware root of trust. Um, so, yeah, so it will work. We'll try to, we, we still have to do some work to try to make it a standardized uh, kind of spec uh, spec abstracted, so it's not our specific technology in the BIM platform spec, but we, we haven't done that yet. So that's a, still a future activity. All right, so the next question is from Rocky. Is there a plan to provide basic SMM reference code or binary for servers? So yes, the, the MIN platform contains SMM. Uh, this is necessary to implement the UEFI variables. And so we do support the, the basic UEFI requirements. And so the basic SMM is in the MIN platform and we can, uh, similar to FSP, we can use the UEFI platform initialization architecture binary capabilities to continue to use um, even proprietary uh, silicon binaries or third-party binaries. So we can extend using UEFI in a, in a model fairly similar to the FSP as a binary, uh, if nothing else. So the plans for those are, are still in their infancy. So we don't have a list of planned features that way. So our, our initial set is to get the MIM platform out there and customers will still use our proprietary solutions from BIOS vendors and, and so forth to get those other features. But over time, we would expect to see more UEFI binaries being available to do some of that stuff in the open. All right, so the next question is from Francois and it is, there was mention of binary components. Can I be more specific? So uh, the binary components for the basic min platform include the Intel FSP, the PCH ignition firmware, which there's another talk later that I would highly recommend. Um, so the, the ME or SPS manageability engine firmware is a binary. Uh, microcode patches are binaries. If we, you know, as we enable boot guard, the ACMs for boot guard would be binaries. So that's the, the basic set for the MIM platform that's required. Uh, so the next question is from Ron Minich. And for those wishing to get FSP and core boot, is there a path? Yeah, so the the idea is that we can put all the pieces there and put the min platform, and the min platform will be under the BSD two clause plus patent license, and so it'll be very easy to transfer, or it'll be relatively easy to transfer from the EDK two to core boot as needed. Um, we don't have plans to enable core boot directly. We still see it as a, a rather large leap to go from our full EDK2 reference platform to core boot. There's, there's a lot more translation, so there's a lot more challenge to do that and a lot more feature difference, whereas we're able to migrate things pretty easily from the full platform to the min platform to do testing. So for example, uh, we can use the full platform ACPI solution to get to some other corner cases and things like that. Um, and that kind of thing is very difficult with core boot because the environments are just a little bit further away. But yeah, so the path would be through us opening up the min platform and then it migrating over to core boot to support targets that way. Uh, so the next question is from Hannah and it is, does min platform UEFI secure boot 
supported? Is is UEFI Secure Boot supported? And the answer is yes. We still plan to do UEFI Secure Boot. All right, so the next question is from Jonathan Zhang. It is, when will Whitley Platform Processor be MP'd? When will corresponding FSP be released to the public? What will the support model for such FSP be? How long will it be supported? And how can public, how can the public uh, make support requests? What is the support flow? So um, in general, the, the first generation we're describing as a proof of concept. And so it's, it's not something we would say is, is directly supported. The, the support challenges for FSP binaries, I know we're, I, I understand are an issue on the client side as well. So we'll be looking to evolve that model and figure out how to, how to make this more workable. Um, but most of those questions don't have answers at this time, or it's it's very difficult to talk about in advance without um, in advance of doing it. So the the plan is really to make the binaries available and then to be able to talk about them. But the yeah the specifics of that right now I believe are people still with direct relationships with Intel ask for support for the FSP changes. Um, that will probably need to evolve. We'll need to hook up the the repo with some sort of bug tracking system and feature request and, and some of those things. But I don't believe that infrastructure is there or I'm not aware of it today. So that the Intel FSP repos are just out there on GitHub with a bunch of binaries. I don't know that there's the rest of the infrastructure. Um, we will take advantage of, I believe we'll take advantage of the EDK2 project, the Tiano Core projects work on CI and things like that to have some min platform things happening more live. And so those kinds of things, you know, maybe we can use the, the JIRA for Tiano Core, but we'll have to, we'll have to work that with that community. I'm not sure that that's, that that's uh, going to be welcomed or not. We just haven't asked. All right, so that is all of the questions so far. Um, so minding the chat for questions, there was a there is a question from Nicolay. Does Intel plan to make some training for the new features, like one in 2013 by Lori Jostrom? So the answer is yes. That that training material is under development. I'm not sure when it'll go public. Uh, there are client min platform ports available in tianocore.org, so that. We're not blocked by the, the server stuff, so the server things that are still under development. So, uh, yeah, I would have to check on that, but keep an, keep an eye on the, the UFI and community, uh, EDK2 community for, for that. Oh, uh, yeah, so another question came in from Jonathan. Yeah, so you did ask about the schedule, the, the specifics for when the FSPs and pieces will be available for future platforms. And I don't, I don't believe I'm at liberty to talk about that. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, I don't think I'm allowed to say publicly things like that. So I'm, I'm vague about the dates in particular uh, on purpose. So it will be after the products are launched. And we're not entirely sure uh, when when that date will be. It's not necessarily going to be immediately at product launch, though our target is to be as close to product launch as we can. But yeah, when we get to product launch, we will be assessing um, 
what the what if there are any issues with risking it, uh, with releasing the FSB binaries. And so far, we don't have any, so it's just being naturally conservative that we uh, we're careful to make sure there's some buffer in there and people aren't expecting or making plans based on the first day the product's available, they'll have the the open system firmware. It's we just don't we, we don't want people to make plans based on that because it's something might change. But yeah, our plan is to release the binaries as close to product launch as we can reasonably. All right, I think we're at the 25 minute mark. So thanks everyone for your attention. I uh, really appreciate it and have a good conference.